Nice to meet you. I know. I'm Dean. Nice to meet What's you. Happening? Good to see you. Thanks for right. coming. Yeah. Yeah. You get. You always have a lot of cameras around you. Know? No. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm the what one. Who's, I'm the one who's not used to it. Have a seat. Thanks for coming too. First, welcome. Um, it's, Thank you. It's great to have you here. Um, Thank you. The things I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you a little bit about race. Mm -hmm. um, your music, some too. I thought the song "Talking to OJ." Uh -huh. was particularly powerful. Mm -hmm. I took the message as, you can be rich, you can be poor, you're still black. Mm -hmm. um, who were you speaking to? Who did you want to listen to that and be moved by it? it it's a nuanced song, you know, it's like, um, I'm specifically speaking to us and about who we are and how do you maintain the sense of self while pushing it forward and, uh, and holding us to have a responsibility for our actions. Mm -hmm. Because in America, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And there's a solution for us. If we had a power base together, it would be a much different conversation than me having a conversation by myself and trying mm -hmm. to change America by myself. Mm -hmm. If I come with 40 million people Mm -hmm. It's a different conversation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's just how it works. I can affect change and get whomever in office because this many people, mm -hmm. we're all on the same page, right? right? right. So it's a conversation. It's like, I'm not rich, I'm OJ. For us to get in that space and then disconnect from the culture, right. that's how it starts. Right. This is what happens. Right. And then you know what happened? You're on your own, and you see how that turned out. Right. Okay. That's why they did. That's the line. The, yeah, yeah, the pregnant pause. It's like, yeah. okay. Was it a reminder, too, that the thing O.J. forgot, maybe? Is yeah. that as rich as he was, as, as entitled as his life was, he was reminded very forcefully when he became a subject of a racial debate that he was also a black man, whether he accepted that or not. That's right. Was it also that message? Yes, absolutely. And for us, like I'm saying, to speak to that point is... Don't forget that, because that's really not the goal. The goal is not to be successful and famous. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> that's not the goal. The goal is, if you have a specific God-given ability, is to live your life out through that, right. one. And two, we have a responsibility to push the conversation forward until we're all equal. Mm -hmm. Until we're all equal in this place, because until everyone's free, no one's free. Right. And that's just, right. that's just the fact when you are as amazingly successful as you are, your kids will live in a very different world from the mm -hmm. world you grew up in. How do you go about making sure that they understand the world you grew up in? There's a, there's a delicate balance to that, right? Because you have to educate your children on the world as it exists today and how it got to that space. But my child, doesn't need the same tools that I needed growing up. Mm -hmm. I needed certain tools to survive my area that my child doesn't need. They'd grown up in a different environment, mm -hmm. but also they have to know their history and have a sense of, of what it took to get to this place and have compassion for others. Right. Every most important thing, I think, out of all this is to teach compassion and to identify with everyone's struggle and mm -hmm. to know these people made these sacrifices for us to, to be where we are and to push that forward for us. I believe that's the most important thing to show them because they don't have to know things that I right. knew growing up, like being tough. Like, Do you worry at all that as much as you will teach them history and as much as you yourself is seen as an important figure among black people in America, that there's something they'll be missing? Or do you think that's silly, in fact, that there have so many advantages that that's like too yeah. negative a way of approaching exactly. it? Exactly. 
like they it's they'll be who they are mm-hmm. right and it's just certain tools that you would hope for your child to have mm-hmm. you know like again fairness and compassion and like empathy and a loving heart and those things translate in any environment those are the main base things that you want well for me i would want my child to have mm-hmm. You know, to treat people as they are, no mm-hmm. matter who they are, mm-hmm. no matter where they sit in the world. Not to, like, be super nice to someone who has a high position or mean to someone who they deem to be below them. I can't buy you love. I can't show it to you. Mm-hmm. I can show you affection and I can, you know, I can express love, but I can't put it in your hand. Right. I can't put compassion in your hand. I can't show you that. Right. So the most beautiful things are things that are invisible. That's where the important things lie. For me, as a black man of a certain age, when I was a kid, O.J. Simpson was God. I'm 61, so I was a little kid when he was... Do you expect black people and white people and young people and old people to hear different things in your music? I'm sure I heard some things Mm -hmm. in that song that you may not even have thought of because I'm a different generation. What do you want a young white kid to hear in that song that maybe a young black kid would not hear? That's a great question. I, um, I think when you make music, you want people to hear it and hear different things, and then you want it to start a dialogue mm-hmm. because that's how we get to understanding. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, you felt that way about it. This is actually what I meant because this happened and these things happened that led to me saying this specific thing. Mm-hmm. How did you react when, when, when the, in the, that one line in that song where you referred to... to Jews and wealth, some people got upset. How did you feel about that? I felt it was really hypocritical. Only because, I mean, it's obvious the song is like, you want to be rich, do what people who got rich done. Of course, it's a general statement, right? It's it's obviously a general statement. Like the video attached to it was a general statement. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have a problem with the general statement I made about black people and people eating watermelon and things like that, that was fine and that line about wealth bothered you, then that's very hypocritical. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's something within yourself. Because right. basically I was saying, you know, Michael Jordan, LeBron James is a great basketball player. He trains in the off season. If you want to be great, train in the off season like him. That's basically the statement. And right. You can't miss the context of the song. Right. You have to be like uh, five years old or something. Some people think that the election of Donald Trump has revive the debate of race in America. Yeah. Some people think that, in fact, there's always been racism in America, it's yeah. that it hasn't changed, and that the debate isn't any different, it's just people are paying attention to it. Yeah, there what was a think? great Kanye West line in one of the songs, he said, uh, racism's still alive, they just be concealing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take a step back. I think when Donald Sterling got kicked out of the NBA, I thought it was a misstep. Because when you kick someone out, of course, he, he's done wrong, right? Um, but you also dr- send everyone else back in hiding. Hmm. People talk like that. Mm-hmm. They talk like that. Let's deal with that. And yeah, I wouldn't just, like, leave him alone. I don't have that solution. There should have been some sort of penalties. He could have lost some draft picks. But getting rid of him just made everyone else go back into hiding. Mm-hmm. And then now we can't have the, the dialogue. Mm-hmm. The great thing about Donald Trump being president is now we're forced to have the dialogue. And now we're having the conversation on a large scale. Mm-hmm. He's like provided the platform for us to have the conversation. And you think that's better, that we should be having the conversation? Absolutely. That's, that's, that's why this is happening. Do you think the debate over race in America is happening in a healthy way? Well, an ideal way is to have a president that says... I'm open to the dialogue and fixing this. Mm-hmm. That's ideal, mm-hmm. but it's still happening in a good way because you can't have a solution until you start dealing with the problem. What you reveal, you heal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? If if I have like a tumor and I don't I ignore it, doesn't mean it goes away. Mm-hmm. I have to diagnose it first. Right. No matter how it happens, if I get hit with a football and like, oh, I feel something there, and then I go to the doctor. It still happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? So 
however it happens, and we just get hit with a lot of football. Right. Right. To use an analogy that right. goes next to the NFL. Yeah. If you were owner, you would sign Colin Kaepernick, right? Yeah, I dedicated the story of OJ to him at Meadows right. concert. Have you met him? Uh, no, we just had dialogue over the oh, that's phone. We told him to get get together. Do you have any doubt that if this not had happened, he would be signed by a team? Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you think basketball is more politically active than football players? Yeah. And why? Why is that? I think, uh, first of all, it's smaller numbers. There's 12 people on the team. In football, you have 53 people. So it's harder to get 53 people thinking the same thing. It's easier to have a conversation to get 12 people on the same page, for one. Two, they have a great commissioner who's mm-hmm. really open and, and mm-hmm. you know, supports them. Mm-hmm. And you feel that. You feel that, you know, when you have a, someone behind you that really believe in what's right, it, it, it motivates you to do the right thing. I think those two factors um, show why they're much further yeah. along. Yeah. Are there incidents even at this stage in your life, so you're famous, you, you're rich, you own stuff, where you run into racism that's evident to you, that's easy to recognize at this uh, stage of your life? Yeah, yes, yeah. But it, it mostly comes when you try to challenge the status quo. If I'm being quiet and entertaining, everyone's cool. Ah, man, it's great. You don't feel racism. Mm-hmm. But when you try to s- challenge the club, it's like, right. oh, no, we should have a seat, at this, to use the Solange album title. Right. We should have a seat right. at this table. And uh, then it gets into a space where it's like, wait, you guys are mad at me about the same thing you guys are doing. And it's, right. it's just, it gets into a weird space. Are you in meetings now in your business life mm-hmm. where you're the only black man in the room? Well, Wait. when I was doing the Nets, I was definitely the only black guy in and the room. And what was that like? Describe that. Uh, it was, it was um, it's strange, but at the same time, I think that, I think that in that room, uh, my celebrity allowed me a voice that probably would have been awkward for someone in my position being the only black person in the room to break through. This album sounds to me like a therapy session. It's yeah, in yeah. a sense, have you been in therapy? Yeah, yeah. First off, how does Jay-Z find a therapist? Not in the phone book, right? No, dude, find- great friends of mine. You mm-hmm. know, friends of mine who've been through a lot and, you know, come out on the other side as like whole individuals. What was that like being in therapy? Uh, Were you, what did you talk about that you had never acknowledged to yourself or talked talk? I grew so much from the experience. But I think the most important thing I got is that everything is connected. Mm-hmm. Every emotion is connected and it comes from, a, from somewhere. And just being aware of it, being mm-hmm. aware of it in everyday life mm-hmm. puts you at a, such a, you at such an advantage. You know, mm-hmm. you realize that you know, if someone's racist toward you, it's not even about you. It ain't about mm-hmm. you. It's about their upbringing and what happened to them and how they le- led them to this point. Mm-hmm. You know, most bullies bully. Mm-hmm. It's happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got bullied a kid, so you're trying to bully me. I understand. Right. And once I understand that, instead of reacting to that with anger, I can mm-hmm. provide a softer landing. Mm-hmm. And maybe, oh, man, are you okay? Mm-hmm. I was just saying, there was a lot of fights in our neighborhood that started with, what you looking at? Why are you looking at me? You looking at me? And then you realize, oh, you, oh, you think I see you. Mm-hmm. You're in a space where you're hurting and you think I see you, so you don't want me to look at you. And you don't want you me to I see you in pain. such a vulnerable... You don't want me to see your pain. You don't... Right. So you put on this shell of this tough person that's really willing to fight me and possibly kill me because I looked at you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so yes. knowing that and understanding that changes life completely. Was that a, a moment that came from therapy? Yeah, just realizing that, oh my goodness, these young men coming from these, they're just in pain. Mm-hmm. You got to survive. So you're mm-hmm. going to survival mode. And when you go into survival mode, what happened? Mm-hmm. You shut down. Right. You shut down all emotions. Right. So even with women, you got shut down emotionally. So you can't connect. And then now all the things happen from there. Infidelity. You can't, connect because you, exactly. you can't connect because of the way you feel about yourself, you mean? 
Yes. In my case, like it's, it was, it's deep. Right. You've taught, you've bared your soul so much, not only in this album, and I mean, you can sort of see the evolution of a person in your music. Part of me would think, oh my God, I got to talk about my marriage. I got to talk about my mother. I got to talk about my other ancestors. Part of me would think that would make me nuts. Does it make you nuts? Or do you feel like the heart of your art and storytelling is, is to tell the story of your life? That's who I am. And I've done it from the beginning of my career. Two things, you know, one, no one knew the characters. So it, didn't, it wasn't as impactful, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and two, it wasn't coming from a place that was as evolved. Mm-hmm. And it's very difficult, you know, it's hard. It's hard mm-hmm. to hear songs back. It's hard to perform songs. But um, I feel it's the most important work that I've done and I'm very proud of it. And the, the effect that it's having on people and mm-hmm. even like the studio sessions, right. you know, we were having four hour conversations after playing one song. Mm-hmm. I learned so much about people that was around me, just my mm-hmm. friends. I learned mm-hmm. th- things about them that I didn't know that right. in 20 year relationship just from this one song. So I right. knew it would have that sort of impact beyond myself. Mm-hmm. It's my responsibility as an artist to, mm-hmm. to go to these places. Did your wife's own confessional album, which came out first, make it so that you had to be even extra confessional? I mean, in other words, it would have been hard after her album, which talked frankly about yeah, yeah. you guys to like have an album to come out that would about be about... frivolous anything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It actually started out, we were working on material together. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it became um, uh, Lemonade. Yeah. You know, she did. She went off and did her her thing, and it was like, it just felt like uh, she should go first, and she should share her 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 truths with the world. So it, it wasn't based on uh, I have to say something because of this album. It wasn't even like that. It's just really honest. But you probably couldn't have gotten away with, okay, you do the album, wife that talks about our pain. I'm going to go do an album that talks about, you know, my love of you know, you art. Just, you never know. Right. Well, I think it turned out for the best. Mm-hmm. I think, I think, but you just never know because people like to be entertained. Again, back to our president. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you would think, <laughs> man, after the composed manner at which Obama stood at that podium, the dignity he brought to that place that this couldn't exist, but it does. Do you have any disappointments in Obama? There are people who say the expectations of him as the first black president were so great. He was supposed yeah. to get rid of racism yeah. and fix everything. Yeah. Is that unfair? Do you think did yeah, he live up unfair. to you? Did he live up to all of your expectations? Yes, because all he could do is the best he can do. He's mm-hmm. not a superhero. Mm-hmm. And it's unfair to place unfulfillable expectations on this man just mm-hmm. because of his color. Mm-hmm. You're actually doing the opposite. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like what do you think is going to happen? He's, he's there for eight years. Mm-hmm. And he has to undo what 43 presidents have done mm-hmm. in eight years. Mm-hmm. It's not fair. What do you think of the state of, I'm not going to say just black leadership, leadership period on the things you care about in the country? Who do you like look at and say, this man or woman I speaks think, uh, for the things I care about? <laughs> It's going to be funny. But <laughs> I find it funny, but my, my leadership, I like Dave Chappelle's leadership. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? You're going to vote for Dave Chappelle yeah. for president. Yeah, because he tells it in humor so you can deal with it, but it's always a, bit, a, a nice chunk of truth in it. Is there a part of you, because you have a certain amount of money, that gets a little more conservative? Or has having money not changed your politics? Yeah, no. I, I, no, cause, because I'm not, I believe in people. Mm-hmm. You know, I want what's best for people. Mm-hmm. I love people. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't, I don't have that sort of thing. Like I want to vote Republican just to <laughs> save more money. Right. That's not the end game. It's not about who got more money right. and who got more houses. Right. Yes, you know, you've earned it. Buy what you want. Right. You know, but right. don't forget what's important. Without right. people, and being rich would be very boring. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no one to share with, no one to have, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you just yeah. be a rich yeah. person, one person on the planet, just yeah. like, yeah. well, then what do you do? When I heard this latest album, and then I thought about the earlier albums, 
one theme is sort of reaching the promised land. You know, you've acquired influence, and not just money, but you have, your life is good. And then when you listen to the newest album, you're thinking, he must have been in a lot of pain when life was good. Absolutely. True? Yeah, I did listen to a song called Song Cry. Mm -hmm. And the, the idea of the hook, never seen it coming down my eyes, but I got to make the song cry. It tells mm -hmm. you right there what I was, I was hiding. Mm -hmm. and the strongest thing a man can do is cry, mm -hmm. to expose your feelings, to be vulnerable in front of mm -hmm. the world. That's real strength. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel like you got to be this guarded person. That's not real. Mm -hmm. It's fake. Mm -hmm. So and does that mean you were unhappy during that period and didn't have a handle on it or, or what? Well, you can compartmentalize, right? So you can be, you can be inside your body and, and be happy. But at the core of it, something else is going on. Right. As a, you know, parent, I thought one of the most painful scene or a line or whatever in the album was when you are talking about having almost lost your marriage and you talk about what it would have been like to watch another man play football with your kid. I thought yeah. that is like, given that you have talked so much about your life and your music, are there things that you put a wall around? I'm not going to talk about that. You've talked about the pain of growing up, where you grew up, how you mm -hmm. grew up, you know, your father leaving early the pain of your marriage, being in therapy. Are there things you say, I'm not going there? Yeah, and it mostly involves other people because when other people are involved, you have to also, you may be ready to expose these things and there's certain parts of, you know, it's also other people truth as well. Mm -hmm. A perfect example is my mom. Yeah, I was gonna ask and, you about and when did I you- I didn't have permission to do that song first. So just like we had a beautiful conversation when did you realize your mother was gay? Uh, really early on. When we, like when as I a was, little kid? Not, no, no, no. Let's say call it teenage years. And so you just, realized it and talked to her about it? Talk, what was that? Like? We never spoke about it. We, it just exists. It was there. Everyone knew. Gotcha. But we never spoke about it gotcha. until, like, recently. Now we, we start having these beautiful conversations and just really, like, getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. We were always good friends, but now we're like really great friends, mm -hmm. you know. And we were just talking as friends, and then she was sharing that she was in love. Mm -hmm. And I guess there's years of like feeling for her and feeling like she's free. She can mm -hmm. be herself. She doesn't have to hide for her kids or be feeling she's embarrassing her kids. It was a much different time then. Don't mm -hmm. just think about it. Yeah, of course. You, you know what I mean? Yes. She could just live her full life, her right. whole life, and be her. Will this get harder over time? Like, you know, as a young man, and your music was the way a lot of young rappers are. It's like, you know, the violent life. Mm -hmm. You know, if that's chapter one of the autobiography, chapter two of the autobiography, I'm oversimplifying this, is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. now I'm really rich. I have a lot of stuff. Let me tell you how cool that is. And then chapter three of the autobiography is, oh my God, I've like run myself into the ground. What's no, chapter, chapter three is, oh my goodness, oh, the most beautiful things are not these objects. The most beautiful things are inside. The most beautiful things are the friendships I have. I have really like golden friendships that, you know, most people don't have. You can have all the watches and paintings in the world. You don't have a friend like, friends like I have. Mm -hmm. The friendships I've acquired and the compassion and the person I've become. Like, that's, that's what this chapter is, mm -hmm. you know? And the, yeah. the conversations with my mom, those yeah. are the real yeah. enriching experiences. Will you have the same adventures in your life? Will you have the same stuff to write about? Or maybe you don't know. I think that rap in particular is a young man's sport, that I'll move out of that white hot space. But rap is about the gift of discovery. Hmm. To be the cool person in school, you have to know the newest music, the newest dance move, have the newest clothing on. Mm -hmm. So rap is based on that, what's mm -hmm. new. What do you, oh, yeah, I know you know Jay-Z is good, but mm -hmm. do you know this song right here that only four people heard it? Right. You know what I'm saying? And then they bring that person into the masses mm -hmm. of pop culture, and then you have a window mm -hmm. before saying that you are the one is no longer cool. And mm -hmm. then you have to move past that, mm -hmm. and you have to find a way to exist. Mm -hmm. The white hot right. space is when it's fresh and new, and it's like, this is the hottest song ever. Right. I mean, I pushed the window like 
You really, still, you I think you're still that, in that space? Oh, I stood in that window a really long time. <laughs> you still in there? But still, no. I don't think people are looking to me as like the the thing. Is They're that ready, hard ready. to deal with, or did you feel like I'm okay with that because I've moved on? No, you don't want to because I. At the end of the day, we're going to find out it's not about the white hot space, but it's about finding the truth. Mm-hmm. That white hot space people think is the biggest thing, but it's really small. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a trend. Mm-hmm. Would you rather be a trend or you rather be Ralph Lauren? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. you'd rather be a trend or you'd rather be forever. I'm the person that looked at the Mona Lisa and be like, man, that's going to be cool in, a co- in 40 years. Right. <laughs> right? I'll play forever. Right. I'll play forever. And, be, and so my whole thing is to identify with the truth, not to be the youngest, hottest, new, trendy thing. Mm-hmm. One of the things you rap about also is the pain you caused the people you sold drugs to. Have you ever had conversations with people like that you caused pain to as a young man and talked no, about it? No, I haven't, no. What would you say to them? Or is that impossible to do at this point? Well, it may... Nothing's impossible, mm-hmm. right? Um, so no, I, I don't think it's impossible. I guess that conversation would definitely take ownership for my part in, in um, you know, the part I played in occupying that space. Mm-hmm. Because knowing what I know now, you know, you can't sacrifice others for your life. Mm-hmm. You know, that's there's a karmic debt that has to be paid. Had I had the level of consciousness then that I have now, things would have turned out differently. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that, I definitely want everyone to know that. (laughs) Do black artists have a different obligation than white artists? Do you feel you have a different kind of obligation to the people who listen to you than if you were a white musician? Yeah, because I have an obligation, going back to the story of OJ, is to further conversation Mm -hmm. of an entire race of people. Not me, Mm -hmm. all of us, but specifically me, since you're asking the question, is to open up dialogue. It's okay to think. It's okay to be smart. You know, there's a time where people was like, you're talking white. Mm -hmm. It's like, what does that even mean? (laughs) I I know words. Intelligence is not a tribute to color. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you've heard it grown up many times. You're speaking yeah. white. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. Speaking like I know words. And, yeah. and it's okay. It's fine. You know, mm-hmm. so I have an obligation to further the conversation in all ways. Mm-hmm. You know, our stature in America, mm-hmm. our emotional maturity, and so on and so forth. It's humbling at the same time. It's like, you know, it's what you've been charged with in life. Right. And I think, believe, since the beginning of time, the poets have been charged with that. Like, mm-hmm. it was the poets that's explaining the emotions and, mm-hmm. and making these songs that people are like, oh, that's what I feel. Right. Are there black artists, and I won't ask you to name them unless you want to, who you think don't live up to that obligation to start a conversation about race? Do you think there are people you well, wish to Well, I mean, I, and for one, OJ, right? We, we, because that's 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 the one that we can all identify. But yes, there are those who don't uphold their mantle, and we know how that story plays out. Do you? Would you? If you could talk to OJ Simpson, what would you say to him if you could talk to him? I don't know. I would probably say, man, I'm sorry that so much happened to you, man. You know, people act out in this way based on their life experiences. And, and, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's been through a lot of trauma in his life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that'll start the conversation. Like, Did you watch the documentary about him? I watched every one. You did? Yeah, no, I did too. He has like Um, eight of them on at the same time. (laughs) You could read... The story of O.J. two ways. You could say somebody should have reminded O.J. he was black. I could read that as a negative message or a positive message. The positive message being you're black and you should be more proud of it. Mm -hmm. The negative message is who are you kidding? You can't escape this by joining a um, private country club and playing golf. Right. Which message feels the right, like the right? They're both. They're both dual, dual messages at the same time. It's like be proud of who you are and, Mm -hmm. and, and... Realize that we, we're going to get further together. Right. Don't check out. You can't just, right. 
you know, turn your back on the place you come from. You come from a community. Your job is to uplift it now. Or we know how it turns out. Right. Once you stop being Tiger Woods and you going on... What would you say to Tiger Woods? Do you know Tiger Woods? No, 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 I'm not. How would you classify Tiger Woods in that discussion? Same sort of thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, when Tiger was afforded the privilege of, you know, he playing golf, you know, you were protected. But the minute that you're not providing for the thing, it's like now your license is on TV and it's like you're black. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now I've got to ask my one gossipy question. Talk about Kanye West and your relationship with him, which you alluded to a little bit yeah. in the album. What's the last time you talked to him? I, I hate Kanye the other day just tell him, like, he's my brother. I love Kanye. I do. It's a complicated relationship with us. You Why know, is it complicated? Because, you know, Kanye came into this business on my label. So I've always been like his big brother. And we're both entertainers. Mm-hmm. So always been like a little underlying competition there with your mm. big brother there. And we both love and respect each other's art too. So it's like a, we both, everyone wants to be the greatest in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then there's like a lot of other factors that play in it. But right. it's going, we're going to always be good. Mm-hmm. You know, even if we don't. there's tension now, right? Hmm? Is there tension still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that happens. In a long relationship, you know, hopefully when we're 89, we look at this <laughs> six months or whatever time and we laugh at that. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. going to be complications in the yeah. relationship that we have to get through. And the only yeah. way to get through that is we sit down and have a dialogue and say, these are the things that I'm uncomfortable with. These are the right. things that are unacceptable to me. This is what I feel. I'm sure he feels that I've done things to him as well. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? These are... I'm not a perfect human being by no mm-hmm. stretch, you know. Is he as evolved as you? You sound like a... He's you know, highly you evolved. Like... No, he's... I think he started out in a more compassionate position than me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he's had the level of... I mean, I had to survive by my instincts. I'm here because I'm a different... I grew up a different way. And I got out of that. Right. My first album came out when I was 26, so I was already a different artist. Right. You know, a lot of people, our album come out, they're 17, 18, so their subject matter is that of a 17 or 18 year old, mm-hmm. unless you're Nas and you're mm-hmm. like well read, and like I think his mom was a teacher or something, like he was way more advanced with the album that he wrote. Mm-hmm. So I just grew up a different way. Mm-hmm. But he's a very compassionate person, mm-hmm. and a lot of times you get in trouble trying to help others, mm-hmm. you know. So I can identify with it. It's just mm-hmm. that there's certain things that happen that I, I, it's not really acceptable to right. me. And we just need to speak about right. it. And it's just like, however the relationship evolves, but there's genuine love there. I'm trying to picture the scene when you and your wife both talked about making these very confessional open albums. Was it difficult to say... I'm going to talk about the problems in our marriage. I'm going to talk about how we almost lost things. And for her to say, I'm going to talk about my pain and anger at you. What were those conversations like? Again, it didn't, it didn't happen in that way. It happened, we, we were using our, with our art almost like a therapy session. And we started making music together. Mm-hmm. And then the music she was making at that time was further along. So her album came out as opposed to the joint album that... Mm-hmm that we were working on. Mm -hmm. Um, We still have a Mm -hmm. lot of that music. And this is what it became. There was never a point where it was like, I'm making this album. I was there. I was right there the entire time. And what was her reaction to your work and what was your reaction to hers? They must have caused pain for each of you, right? Of course. And both very, very uncomfortable, but sitting in that, the best best place in the, uh, you know, hurricane is like in the middle of it. Yeah. We were sitting in the eye of the hurricane. Maybe not use hurricane because so many people are being affected right now. Yeah. But the best place is right in the middle of the pain. Right. And that's where we were sitting. And it was uncomfortable. And we had a lot of conversations, you know. Right. And really proud of the music she made. And she was really proud of the, the, mm-hmm. the, the art I released. And, you know, at the end of the day, we really have a mm-hmm. healthy respect for one another's craft. Mm-hmm. I think she's amazing. Right. You know, most people walk away and like divorce rate is like 50% or something because most people can't 
see themselves. The hardest thing is seeing pain on someone's face that you cause and then have to deal with yourself. Yeah. So you don't, yeah. most people don't want to do that. Yeah. You don't want to look inside yourself. Yeah. And so you walk away.